So it's kind of interesting. Day seven and day eight sound a little bit alike. So uh, talking about the 25 random pieces of advice, yesterday was number seven. Choose a few awesome friends and stick with them. And today is cultivate a circle of people around you who make you better. And I guess the difference may be that you don't necessarily, these don't have to be your friends, although it uh, might be a good idea when you're cultivating strong relationships and, um, of people who make you better, they could also be your friends. Friends, acquaintances, could be people you work with, could be mentors. So what do you look for? And again, I think that you look for people that make you better. Um, you look for things that you desire in yourself or uh, you need to be that which you're looking for. So the first thing to look for is trust. You know, you, you really wanna trust the people that you surround yourself with, whether it's a mentor or a coach or a really close friend or if you're in, when you're in relationship with your partner, you wanna be able to trust that person. And so you need to show up and be trustworthy because that's how, um, you know, you have to exude trust so people trust you so then you can trust them. And it's, you know, it's to be vulnerable with people. And as Brene Brown says, being vulnerable doesn't mean you have to share everything about your life. Those are for your really, really close friends. To be vulnerable, though, is to let people know if you're struggling and you have a coach or a mentor, you need to let that person know um, that you're struggling so they can give you some ideas and, on how to move through that. So be wise when you uh, pick the people in your inner circle and, uh, and just know that one of the greatest qualities when you pick these people in your inner circle is to pick, pick, pick people that you can truly trust. And I guess um, you know, I was going to say the next one sounds a lot like the first one and it's not. So it, it's truth. Don't live in an echo chamber. And what I mean by that is you don't want to surround yourself with a bunch of yes people. Oh yeah, she says this and oh yeah, I agree with you totally. You know, I talked about yesterday about having too many like-minded people around you. It's always good to have somebody that's going to challenge you and, and be curious about why you think the way you think, why you believe the way you believe, why you do the things that you do. Somebody that might say to you, really, do, do you think that's the smartest thing to do right now in your life? Not telling you not to do it, and yet having the, the um, stamina, the strong enough friendship that they'll be honest with you. That, you know, and I have I have really good friends that I'm honest with them and they're honest with me. And it's one of those things that I may say, that might be a good idea. They might not do it. And I don't take it personal if they don't, if they ask my opinion. And remember yesterday it was, don't give people the, your opinion unless they ask for it, especially when it's something involving their personal life. If they ask you, great. Um, if, you know, they, it might be when a friend comes to you and says, gee, I really want to do this. What are your thoughts on it? That's when you might say something like, so why do you want to do that? You know, what's the outcome you're looking for? I love um, visioning. It wasn't my strongest suit, if you will, at a period of time in my life, but I like visioning. And I think it's crucial to surround yourself with people that are visionaries, that can see um, that things can move and change and that you're an invaluable piece of that circle to make um, to make those changes. Uh, the organization that I, uh, that I belong to, my spiritual organization, you know, we're looking at is the way we have always done things, is that the best way? Or are we just doing it that way because that's the way we've always done it? And if it's we're doing it because that's the way we've always done it. And a lot of people love that. Uh, you know, people don't necessarily love change. And so it's introducing changes maybe other than on a Sunday or maybe after a regular Sunday service until people kind of get used to what would that look like if instead of a Sunday service, we had a Sunday gathering. 
And instead of somebody just talking at me, we had somebody that presented an idea and then it was open for discussion. Maybe instead of sitting out and having somebody stand up and speak, you sat in a circle and the person could speak. You know, I'm sitting now, I don't have to stand up to speak. So just having visions of, just because we've always done something a certain way, doesn't mean that it's not time to change and do things differently. Because if we hadn't done things differently, we'd still be in horse and buggies. We'd probably still be living in caves. It took somebody saying, let's change this, let's move forward. And now it's, uh, you know, it's not as drastic as going from a horse and buggy to a car that has a motor. And yet, you know, not long ago, our cell phones were kind of big, chunky things that we carried around and all we could do is talk on them now. And what they are today is a mini computer in the palm of your hand. So change is good and it can be scary. So just surround yourself with people who are willing to look at change as an opportunity to grow. I think another really important thing when you look at people on your inner circle, do they bring you peace? Or when you go home, are you tired and you feel like um, you've had all the energy sucked out of you? You want to be with people that make you laugh, that bring you peace, that, um, that challenge you. And yet, even when you're challenged, you feel a level of, of trust and uh, positivity in your life. You know, it's easy. Uh, I... I heard a quote and I'm, I didn't write it down, so I'm not gonna quote it exactly. And it was, being positive is like climbing up a mountain. And being negative is like sliding down the mountain. It's easy to be negative. Being positive, looking for the good in situations takes mindfulness and it takes commitment and it brings you a sense of peace. And then the fifth thing to look for when you're looking for your inner circle of people is be, have a sense of grace with each other. Give each other the benefit of the doubt. Know that everybody in your circle is doing their best. Nobody is out to hurt you, um, that, that you're there to love and support each other. So that would be number eight today is cultivate a circle of people around you who make you better because they, um, they're trustworthy, they are truthful with you, they're visionaries and want things to change and are willing to, to do the work with you to make it change. You, you have a sense of peace when you're around them and you have a sense of inner grace. So it's about choosing people you can trust to speak the truth to you and who won't blab your secrets the first chance they get. To pick visionaries to surround you who can lift you up and help you achieve your goals. Connect with people who highly value peace and grace. Choose your inner circle wisely. I'm going to end today with your science fact of the day from the Daily Adam. This is about ferret badgers. Are the smallest type of badger. I didn't even know this. There are five species of badgers, including the Borean, the Chinese, the Javan, Burmese, and Vietnam ferret badgers. Oh, wow. There's five types of ferret badgers, and they're the smallest type of badger. And the Chinese ferret badger is the smallest of them all, weighing two to six pounds. So that is your science fact of the day from the Daily Adam. I am Reverend Gail Dillon, and I will be back tomorrow. You have a blessed day.